Hello PBTISD, this is Gerald for Tech Tuesday, and this week we are looking at Google Earth. To get to Google Earth, all you have to do is get on your Chrome browser. Google Earth does not work with other browsers anymore. All you have to do is type in Google Earth and find that first link that comes up, click on it, and it will take you to Google Earth. Now notice on this uh, home page, on the bottom left corner, you have Launch Earth in Chrome. And on the top right, you also have that same option. So I'm just going to click on this one. And it will take me to Google Earth. There it is. So what are the things that you can do here? First, let's look at navigation. So here on the bottom right, you're going to have the negative and the positive button. So these are the zoom in and zoom out buttons. If I click on the zoom in button, you see the earth is getting closer. Zoom out makes it go farther away. I have the 3D view, which right now is grayed out. You have a compass. You have your fly to your location button, but you're going to have to give Google Earth your location to do that. And then you have an image of the earth. Now, if I take my cursor and I put it on the earth itself, and I click and hold the left button and then drag my finger on the trackpad or maybe move your mouse around, you're gonna see that you will be able to look at different views of the earth. Now notice that as I'm turning it, the background also changes. So you're different, uh, seeing different stars too. And this view right here is actually really amazing because you can see the Milky Way galaxy. So one really cool way that you can use Google Earth in your classroom is by taking your students on a virtual field trip. Let's say we wanted to go to Machu Picchu. All I have to do is click on the search button, type in the name of the place, Or actually, you can also put in uh, coordinates if that's what you wanted. But I uh, typed in the name, and it's taking me to Machu Picchu, and that's what it looks like from Google Earth. Notice how this information box opened up on the bottom, uh, on the right corner. If you look at the information, you see that at the end it fades out. What that means is, if you click on it, you're going to have more information. That they're going to give you okay so i clicked on it and that's the information that they have for machu picchu it includes elevation height area and all that and then there's this fun fact where it says in 2007 it was voted as one of the seven new wonders of the world if i click on see another fact it's going to take me to a different piece of information and the site that they got it from so Let's go back and see what we can do in Google Earth with Machu Picchu. Uh, for this information box to go away, you can do two things. You can click on the up arrow, which is going to minimize it, but it's going to give you the coordinates. Or you can click on the X button. So what other things can we do with Google Earth? So here on the bottom right again, if you click on the 3D icon, it's going to take you to a tilted view. It kind of looks kind of 3D, but it could be better, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get closer by clicking and dragging this human icon. That is actually the street view icon. And when you click and drag it, take note, what you need to do is drag it or take it to a place in Google Earth that you want to explore. So let's say I want to take him here. I'm going to release the click button and it's going to take me exactly where I dropped him. So right now I'm just navigating by clicking and dragging and then wherever you see those arrows that means that you can move forward or backwards or at whatever the uh, direction the arrow is pointing at. So I'm just navigating through that, and once I'm done going through the field trip, I can click on this Earth icon, double-click it rather, and then it'll take me back to the world view. So 
So now we're going to look at Voyager. So this is a Voyager icon. If I click on that, what it's going to do is take me on a page that has different options. I'm going to look at sustaining the humpback whales. So all I have to do is click on that picture, and it gives me a short description of uh, what this voyage is going to be like. So this one says, follow humpback whales on their annual migration and learn how new understanding of large marine ecosystems can help us better manage the oceans. So I'm just going to click on dive in and the screen splits into two. The left has your Google Earth and the right has your information. Here on the bottom, you're going to have a forward and backwards button. And as you go through the assignment or as you go through the, the voyage, it will give you different bits and pieces of information. Again, notice how the text is fading a little bit. When I scroll it down, that means that there's more information there that I can look at. If I click on it, the earth is going to change again. It's going to move to a different position. And again, I can go forward and backwards with it. Now let's go back to Voyager so we can see what other things you can do with it. So even though I showed you those, there are actually a lot of different things that you can use here. There's an education tab, futuristic film locations, so on and so forth. So these are some of the different voyages that you can take. Let's look at education for a second. So these are the activities that they have in there. And that is your Voyager. So now we're going to take a look at the I'm getting lucky button, which is when you click on it, Google Earth will take you on a random place on Earth. So this time it, take, it took me to Lake Constance. If I click on it again, it's going to take me to a different place. And you still have that information box that pops up. I'm just going to close that. And you can still use these different buttons to navigate through that. So this is the My Places button. If you click on that, you're going to see that you will be able to add places KML or KMZ files, uh, but you're going to have to change the settings on that. This will be a totally different tutorial altogether, so we're going to keep this uh, tutorial simple. So last thing that we're going to do with uh, Google Earth is we're going to measure distances, and we're going to do that by clicking on this icon here. So when I click on that, this window or box opens up and you can change the units from miles to meters, kilometers, whichever you prefer. I'm going to stay with miles here. And then if I wanted to know the distance between Drockton, I don't know if that's the right way to pronounce it, from there to here, Oldenburg. So all you have to do is click and release at Drockton and then click and release in Oldenburg. And it's going to give you that distance here. Now, if I wanted to know the distance from Drockton to Wilshaven, so now you're going to have 105.86 miles. So what if I wanted to know the area? So I'm just going to start new. Then I'm going to go from Assen to Papenburg say to Dokum, then back to Asa. So you just have to take the line all the way back to, or, to the origin. It's going to give you both the perimeter and the area. So the perimeter is in miles, but the area is in kilometers squared. But again, you can change that to square miles or whatever unit you prefer. That is for this week's Tech Tuesday. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that you're able to use Google Earth in your classroom. It's a wonderful way to get the students out and have them explore the world without actually leaving the classroom. Uh, to give you an idea of how teachers are using it, I'm going to leave you with this video of Miss Borunda using Google Earth in her uh, Spanish class.
Okay, so describe it, write it down. Okay, número dos. Double click on the placemaker for a view of the Avenida 9 de Julio. This avenue is an entire city block wide with seven lanes in each direction. Travel north up the avenue. Where does it lead? Oh, Avenida 9 de Julio. If you see over here, mira. You see over here, Vista 3, it says on the bottom, Avenida 9 de Julio, right there. Right on the, ra, ahí mero. There you go. You got it? Okay. So, uh, where does it lead? Travel north up the avenue. Outside the city. Outside the city. So, fuera de la ciudad. Does it have a name? Mm. He's following it right now. The yellow line. Mm. See it? Is it that? Yes. So, where does it lead? Is there a dot? Um, what does it say right there? Okay, so it's a loading. It has the train station. That's a train station, ¿verdad? Una estación de tren. So te lleva a la estación de tren. Train, train.